And now we're up to Daf, Pei Zainam and Beis, and we're still interpreting the first Shita of this of this Mishnah, and that is the sheet of this Baisa, and that is the sheet of Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Shmuel continues and tells us the Hefer la Te'ena made a Mufar Shefer Af la Novi. Hafara be Mixas, the Chatzon Lashme Hafara, and you have to be made for even the entire Neder, and then Hafara be Chal, or you can't be made for the Neder at all. If you're made for only part of the Neder, like for example, Vizvi Te'ena, but not Vizvi Anovi, that Hafara. Is meaningless. Dire Rabbi Shmuel. And that Tana Rabbi Shmuel is the identical Tana who authored our Mishnah that made that very sharp contrast between Konam and Afar. And it's very interesting because this distinction between Konam and Afar, which is established in our Mishnah Stoma and is related to Rabbi Shmuel and the Brisa is very much reflective of the fact that Konam, I'm sorry, that that uh, Hakoma Saneder and Afara Saneder are two separate concepts, which we've had in the past. We said that, for example, Kium Belev Havikim, if he approves of the Neder in his heart, even though he hasn't said a word, that Kium is Chal. And Afara, you need the actual verbalization, or you know, he has to verbalize Mufa Lefi. So we see that the standards and requirements of Afara are that much higher than Hakoma. Hakoma, in a certain sense, is almost passive, like we have Hakoma Yom Shomo if he was Shosei. But Hafara requires a Kumba Se. So we raise the banner and the standards of Afara. Here, too, Hafara requires that you make for the entire Ned. Hakoma could be Chal even on part of the Ned. Now we get to the second Shita, and that's Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva Omer. Rabbi Kiva says, no, I'm not going to go that far to distinguish between Akoma and Afara. Akoma and Afara are two sides of the same coin. Hareu Omer, the Pasuk says, Isha Yikimenu ve'isha Yifirenu. So you see, if you want to call it a Hekesh or Smichus, but the Torah very strongly implies a, an, a, an equation between Akoma and Afara. And Rabbi Akiva accepts the drasha of yiki menu, which means yakim mi menu, part of the hakama, and therefore my yiki menu mi menu, meaning part of it, and therefore the hakama is chal on the entire neder if he was makayim part of the neder, is by virtue of the smichus here af yifirenu mi menu. We're going to read the word yifirenu in the pasuk because it says mi menu, not yifirenu that he has to be made for the entire neder, but yifirenu mi menu. Part of the nether, and if, if the bow was made for part of the nether, then the entire nether is mufar. So, for example, according to Rabbi Akiva, let's say he was Makayim the nether visibly to Enim, and that's called a Hakoma of Miktas, then Allah sees it as if he was making the entire nether. So, there's no room for Hafara on the Anovan. But if, on the other hand, he did a fara on the te'enim. Then the fara is chal to the oak of the nether, vatal the nether, even as far as anavim. According to Rabbi Shmuel, on the other hand, if he was makayim part of the nether, the nether is chal, the kiv is chal in the entire nether. But if he was made for part of the nether, the, the fara is not meaningful at all. So imagine a case where she took a nether combining te'enim anovim. He says, I approve, I want to be matayim the nether for te'enim, but I want to be mefer the nether as far as anovim are concerned. So that far can't be chal. And not only that, the akoma is chal mevela on the entire nether. Now I suspect that that would be true even if he were to be made for the second half, meaning the Anovim have toch kivei dibur of his akom. Because although you could be shoel on akom, but afara is not considered she'ela on the akom. So therefore, the afara afterwards on 
Anovim would not be able to be Chal because the Akoma generates a shame Kukam, a shame Kiyum on the entire Nedim. And after Akoma, he cannot be made for. Now, the Gemara looks for a counter-argument of Rabbi Shmuel against the argument of Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Shmuel, Miksiv Yofer Mimenu. In the case of Hafar, it says Yikimenu, which means Yakim Mimenu, part of the, of the Nedu. But in the case of Hafar, it doesn't say Yafir Mimenu. It says Yifirenu, referring to the entire Nedu. And therefore, with regard to Afara, it's an all or nothing proposition, says Rabbi Shmuel, and either the Afara is on the Italian editor or it's not a Afara at all. Now the Gemara wants to know how would Rabbi Akiva address the counter argument of Rabbi Shmuel and counter the counter argument of Rabbi Shmuel? Rabbi Akiva adds, Hafar Matish, Hafar Lakoma. I mean, both Hafar and Akoma are written in the same breath, in the same possible. And that means we're comparing hafara takoma ma hakoma mimenu afafara mimenu. So if he was made for part of the nether, the entire nether is mufa, which is the polar opposite of Rabbi Shmuel, who says that the hafara is not hal at all visibly the nether, even on the part of Tatum that he was made for. Now, this hekesh of Rabbi Akiva, in which he derives the halakhic principles of Afara from those of Hakoma seems to seems to put Hafara and Hakoma in the same boat, as if they're two sides of the same coin and they should be equated. We said that that's not really so. We know that Hakoma believe Havi Hakoma, whereas Hafara believe Lo Havi Hakoma. I think, I, I don't see anything here in the Masifta right now, but I think what we're going to have to say is that Rebbe Kiva's Hekesh here is a very local Hekesh, meaning when the Torah is addressing the issue of a partial Hakoma and its parallel Hafarla Chatzayin, it's all written in the same posseh to equate Hafara to Hakoma. But if you're asking a, a much more fundamental question, whether or not we can equate how far with how far with how comma, the answer is a, a robust no. So far, we've seen only two opinions: that uh, those of Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Akiva. The Bryson now goes on to mention a third opinion, and that's the Chacham. Om Rav Chia Bar Abba Rav Yochan. Though Divrei Rabbi Shmuel Rabbi Akiva. They both agree to one point, one fundamental point of agreement, and that is that if the Baal is making part of the Nedah, then the Hakoma is calling the entire Nedah. And Rabbi Akiva never doubted that Halacha. And he, no, I should say the other way around, and Rabbi Shmuel never doubted that Halacha. He just objected to extending that Halacha and applying it to Afara. But both Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Shmuel agreed per Echad that a hakama on half of the nether is, generates hakama on the entire nether. Now we have a third opinion. Matish hakama lafara. And we're going to go with the hekish in the opposite direction. We're going to accept the opinion of Rabbi Shmuel against Rabbi Akiva that Hafara the mixas lechatzoyin lav shmei hafara, and then we're going to apply that to hakoma. And ma hafara, ma shehefer lo hefer. That's how we have to read the girsa. In other words, the hafara is not chal at all, even on that part of the neder, namely paid him that he was made for. It's not chal at all. The neder is exactly as it was before. His partial hafara is af hakoma ma she. Even the part of the Neda, namely Ta'edim, that he was Makayim and he proved to that part, is not considered a Kiyum. 
So whereas Rabbi Akiva was insisting on deriving Hafara from Hakama, the Chacham go the opposite direction, they're deriving Hakama from Hafara. So let's just summarize the three opinions. Our Mishnah is Rabbi Shmoya, that if the Baal was making part of the Nether, the Nether is completely making, but in Hafara, the Hafara is not valid unless he was made for the entire Nether. Then we have Rabbi Akiva's opinion that even with regard to Hafara, Hafara be mixa shmei Hafara, I'm sorry, what it means is Hafara be mixa shmei Hafara on the entire Nether, and the entire Nether is Batel, and just like the Hakam of Mixas impacts on the entire Nether to make it Nether who comes, so to Hafara be Mixas impacts on the Nether to make it Mufar Bakulo. And all this is based in Rabbi Akiva's frame of reference on the Hekage between Hafar and Hakam. And then we have the third sheet to that of Hakam, that even with regard to Hakam, if he was only making part of the Nether, the Hakam is not valid at all, just like. In Haka, just like in Afara, in which case, like Rabbi Shmuel, if he was made for part of the Nether, Afara doesn't register at all. The Mishnah taught us, Amra, Konam, Pe'ena. If she separates the Te'ena from the Anova, and she says, Konam, Pe'ni, Sheni, Toemis, and then she says, Anova, Sheni, Toemis, so he has Sheni Toemis twice. That generates a chatzitza that separates the two Nidarim and makes them into two Nidarim. The Baal can decide he wants to make him one of these two Nidarim and still be made for the other men. Omer of Masnisen Rabbi Shimoni. Our Mishnah reflects the sheet of Rabbi Shimon. And what that means is that if, let's say, five people are being tovea, a certain nitba, so there's one nitba and five tovim, and let's say it was a echo that supported each one of the five tovim, so he's high a shvur to five people, Rabbi Shimon's opinion is that unless he repeats the word shvur vis-a-vis each one of these five gentlemen, then it's one combined indivisible shvur. So for example, if he says Shvua sheni no sing lecha. I'm sorry. Shvua sheim lecha biyadi. Velo lecha, velo lecha, velo lecha. It's all one shvua. Why? Because he didn't add the word shvua to separate each one. And he said shvua sheim lecha biyadi. And then shvua sheim lecha biyadi. And then to the third guy, shvua lecha biyadi, the word shvua would separate the different shvuos into many different shvuos. But if he combines them all in one, shvuos sheim lecha v'yodim lecha v'lecha, without repeating the word shvuah, then it's one shvuah. And the parallel to that is our Mishnah, where if on the one hand she says, konam te'enim hanovim shani to'emes, that's considered one indivisible nedra on both te'enim and hanovim, but if she would have said, Konam te'ena shani toemis, and then another shani toemis, then it would be separate and it would be two midorim, and that's the safe of Amish. Now, this is the opinion of Rabbi Shimon. The Chachamim disagree. Even if she says, Konam te'ena vanovim shani toemis, combining them both into one neder, one konam, we still would define it as two separate endurance. And the Baal could be Makayim each section or be made for each section because they're two separate endurance. And therefore, going to Rachamim, if he says, <laughs> we consider it as if he is the Nishba, many, many different Shvuas, multiple Shvuas. Now, this leads us to the Mishnah. On the bottom of Pezayin of Beis. And tomorrow is Shabbos, and that's Daf Peches. So, what I would like to do with your permission in the short amount of time that we have left is to fast forward, if you will, to the Mishnah for Shabbos.
which is on Peches. Samadir Hanoso Hanomi Chasono. So the father-in-law imposes a neder that his son-in-law will not be neder from him. Vehu and the Chasan, I'm sorry, the father-in-law, the Chosen, wrote to Lasses Lebito Mos. Now the halacha is that Yada Ishikiyad Bailo. So if he bequeaths money to his daughter, he's being Mahana, his son-in-law. And he, his son was enjoined from having a no. So the Mishnah wants to know what could be the method by which he could circumvent this problem, give a gift to his daughter, and at the same time, not upset or violate the neder that he imposed on his chasan, on his son in law. And the Mishnah advocates the following solution. Omer Law, the father who took the nether, says to his daughter, I'm giving you this money as a gift, but only on the condition that they will remain in your possession. However, and then therefore the, the husband does not uh, acquire any possession over this gift, and hence there's no violation of the nether. However, the Mishnah stipulates that that t'nai is not meaningful and it's not valid. A father cannot give a gift to his daughter and say, you know what? Your husband does not have any part of this gift because again, the Allah is that yada isha ki ad bailu. Ella, but rather he has to say to the following, masha noses vinosenes befirch in other words, from this matana, that which you will eat, let's say you take most and buy food, and he stipulates that only the food part of these modes belongs to you. And in this case, that part of the nechassim, which is food to feed his daughter, remains in the exclusive possession of his daughter, which reflects the sheet of Rabbi Meir in the set the Kedushin of Gimel and Beis, that Ein Le'isha Yaruz Chiyabolo Baila. So when her father gives her a gift, and even though he stipulated a condition that the Baal will not have Rishus and possession, that tonight is bottom, because Rabbi Meir says, Ein le'isha yad. She doesn't have her own independent yad. However, when he adds the statement that she will not be zolk in the mose, only that part of the mose that she needs to feed herself, even Rabbi Meir is mode in that case, that the Baal is not zolk. Because at what point does the Isha really acquire ownership over those modes of the gift, that's only when she eats whatever food she buys with those modes. Because the, the father was only makna her for this purpose of her feeding, her eating. Now, at the point in which she is zoha by using this money for food, the Baal is already excluded. And that's based on the following principle. Ein roi shabal yizke b'masha b'fi chavero. A person is not zokha in that which goes into the mouth of his friend. And in the ritva he says, kshe masna masha no senes with no senes but no senes with fir. Kavanoso she isha tizke menachosim rak li acha she tochal also. For us, nobody can be Zoka in that which she eats, not even her own husband. And that's called Mashat no says no senes the fif lo zocha ba. But if, for example, the father would say to her, that which you cover your body with, you know, take these moles and buy a, a uh, an entire uh, wardrobe, then the ba will be Zoka in those nechassim. Because at the moment that she uses the nechassim and she covers her body with them, the Baal could be zolcha in them. Not 
like the case of Belvish of the Thea, where it's Eno Roy Liz Kosmar. And this is all the Sugya Sanhamara here on Peiches, recording the Machlokes between Rabbi Meir Chachom and Mesech Kedushin of Bezim and Bez, with regard to Yitzias Eve Kenani Lechavshin, which means that the Rav, the Adon, gives money to, gives money to his Eve. And Rabbi Meir holds that Eino Yochel Lotzeis Bekesa, the money of the Adon could not serve as the medium to be Meshachar the Evan. Why? Because Yad Evan Ki Yad Rabba. So the Evan has no rights or no Yad to be Kona without his Rab, without his Adon. So any money that's given by the Adon to the Evan belongs to the Rab. And therefore, this money cannot be considered. Kesef Shichur, and Rabbi Meir would only allow for the money to be Meshachar, the Evid, if it was given by someone else other than the Adon. But if it's given by the Adon, then ain't Kenyan the Evid below Rabbah. And that's the opinion of Rabbi Meir, but the Chacham disagree. They hold that an Evid could be Yachal Lotzeis, even if what? Even Al Yideyatzma. In other words, even if even if what? Even if the money comes from the Adon to the Evid, that itself would be enough to generate a shikru. And how much more so if a Kherim give him money and they say, well, it's on the condition that your rab will not have rishus over the money, certainly that could be serve as, ke as kesef shichur. And the Gemara is now going to explain that our Mishnah, which requires that the father add the, the stipulation, that reflects the shita of Rabbi Meir. Amar Rav, and with this, we'll conclude. Lo shanu ela, the Amar la. In addition to saying Amanash ein ba lebalik rishus bayim, he adds mashat no seis when no senes bechiv. Avolim Omar mashat tirzi asi kani yason bal. If he says to his daughter, "Here's a hundred thousand dollars. Spend it." In any way you want, immediately that money goes into the shus of the Baal, and that's a violation of the Neder. So that Rav is now imposing the Shita of Rabbi Meir onto our Mishnah. Shmuel Omer, on the other hand, our Mishnah. Is a filu over my shetutzi asi lo kani yason ba. In other words, according to Shmuel, he doesn't have to stipulate. The father doesn't have to say explicitly. Ela mashat no says for no senes to fear. But Shmuel says that even if the father declared my shetutzi asi. Take the money and use it in any way you want, and the Baal is not Kona these Nechasi. So basically, Rav is expressing the view of Rabbi Meir, and he's learning that in order to, so to speak, cut out the, the, the Baal, the, the Chasan, the son in law, he's got to add. Mashat no senes for no senes but fear. Shmuel would hold that on the one hand, I might agree with you that the Mishnah reflects the sheet of Ra, but we're going to pass it like the Chachamim, which means that the Evid has a Yad without his Ra, independent of his master. Therefore, Shmuel says, even if he only says the Mashat Tirzi, Says to her, I should say, Mashatirzi Asi, or Amnashayim Labalik Rishus Behem, 
That's enough to cut out the Baal. And that would be my for the name. Okay then, so this is where we'll stop and uh, we're halfway through the Daf for Shabbos, which is good. And I wish you a wonderful Shabbos. All the best.